You do not accept the existence of, of a God, a divine prime mover. Eh? No. Now, the reason you don't is because you can't prove that, there, that such a entity or being or energy exists. I can't, or in, nor can anyone else. Uh, there is no proof. There is no proof that there is no... That there, so, therefore, you've concluded that there isn't one. That's right. Um, you can't prove there isn't. You, you are never called upon to prove a negative. That's right. a law of logic. Right. When you accept right. such an important issue as the creation of the universe, yes. on faith, you're destroying your confidence and the validity of your own mind. Ayn Rand was born Elisa Zinovievna Rosenbaum on February 2, 1905, in St. Petersburg, Russia. From a young age, she showed great intellect, writing screenplays at the age of 8 and novels at the age of 10, even taking an interest in political debates as early as age 12. At age 16, she enrolled in Petrograd State University, where she was introduced to the writings of Aristotle, Plato, and Friedrich Nietzsche. She arrived in the United States on February 19, 1926. She moved to Hollywood and took a job as an extra in the film The King of Kings, as well as working as a junior screenwriter. While on the set of The King of Kings, she met actor Frank O'Connor. They got married on April 15, 1929, and she became a permanent U.S. citizen later that year. In 1943, Rand's book The Fountainhead was published by the Bob's Merrill Company after being rejected by 12 publishers. She wrote the book over a span of seven years. It was a massive success. In 1957, Random House released Rand's last and most successful novel, Atlas Shrugged. Rand described the novel as the role of the mind in man's existence and, as a corollary, the demonstration of a new moral philosophy, the morality of rational self-interest. Upon its release, the book received generally negative reviews yet sold millions of copies, and to this day remains a big seller, and one of the most influential books of all time. On March 6, 1982, at the age of 77, Ayn Rand died of heart failure at her home in New York City. To this day, Ayn Rand remains one of the most divisive people to ever live, with admiration and support from millions to outright condemnation from others. I think I can speak for everyone out there advocating following the advice of a 50-year-old novel set in an America that never existed. That when millions are losing jobs, losing homes, and losing hope, there is nothing more important than putting yourself first. Certain writers that just had this vision of the future, it seems like, you know, this out of control, no, no bounds government, I don't care if it's Orwell's 84, uh, or Taylor, some of Taylor Caldwell is a favorite author of mine, or Atlas Shrugged, they got it. They understood what could happen. Her novel, Atlas Shrugged, led her to develop the philosophy of objectivism, which advocates the virtues of rational self-interest, capitalism, and reason. But you say everybody is enslaved to everybody, yet this came about democratically. I, a free people in a free country, voted for this kind of government, wanted this kind of legislation. Do you object to the democratic process? I object to the idea that people have the right to vote on everything. The traditional American system was a system based on the idea that majority will prevailed only in public or political affairs, and that it was limited by inalienable individual rights. Oh. Therefore, I do not believe that a majority can vote a man's life or property or freedom away from him. Therefore, I do not believe that if a majority votes on any issue, that this makes the issue right. Even though Rand was an atheist who rejected religion, she has heavily influenced conservatives and libertarians alike, such as Paul Ryan and Rand Paul. Her likeness and message can still be seen in protest today throughout the country. She was a staunch supporter of abortion and opposed war and military draft, but she also referred to homosexuality as immoral and disgusting. Referred to the Israeli-Palestine conflict as civilized men fighting savages, and these comments she made on Native Americans. I do not think that they have any right 
to, to live in a country merely because they were born here and acted and lived like savages. She is looked at with admiration and disdain. A hero and a villain. And whether you like it or not, she'll always be an atheist who influenced the world.